Hello everyone, welcome to the video. In this video, we'll be talking about the safe stack template. Now, when starting with the safe stack, we normally start with the safe stack template. So basically, there is a template, like a .NET template, so you can go .NET new safe once you have it installed. Uh, creates a new template and creates for you a solution with everything you need to get started with the safe stack. And the safe stack is, like I mentioned in the previous video on how to create web applications in F-Sharp, it's basically a stack where you can create full stack applications in F-Sharp, fully in F-Sharp. And so the template actually includes many things that you will normally need for a full stack application. So the four obvious parts are the you know, Saturn, so that's your backend. You have uh, Azure integration, so if you want to deploy on the cloud, you have that built in. You have Fable, which is the F Sharp to JavaScript compiler. And Elmish, or Elmish, or Felice, or the, the frameworks that normally come with it. And so these are frameworks, frameworks to design your UI. Now, what is not mentioned in those four letters is there's a lot of tools around the safe stack that can come built in if you are going with the standard template. So basically a safe template or the safe stack template comes in two flavors and comes with the standard form and the minimal form. And so by default, you get the standard form, which comes, comes with many things built in. So you get uh, Bulma integration with Fulma, you get packets as a package manager, you get fake as a build automation tool. You have uh, Azure integration. You have testing with Expecto and Fable Mocha. Mo Mocha, yeah. And so these are like things that are very valuable. And if you're new or to be honest, like most people should start with that template and you have the minimal template that's very stripped down. And so uh, you, you can like really customize it from there. But even if you were to customize it, so in my case, you know, I'm swapping out my front end with uh, Sutil. And so like I, I started from the, the standard template and added the things or modified the things I wanted. And so I felt like the standard template was good for me because most of the things I want, I just want to sw sw swap a few things. And so that would be your decision, uh, what you want to start with. But for this video, I'm going to focus on the standard template. And I should mention that there's a bit of a churn going on with .NET 5. And so one thing to note is since the safe stack has components from many different open source libraries, it's very hard to you know, uh, integrate all of these and, have, and coordinate everyone to make a great template. And so there's been kind of a, a bit of lag since .NET 5, but it's uh, actually going on pretty well. So now there's a branch that has .NET 5, Fable 3, um, and uh, a, a version of Fake where you're not actually running it as a build tool, you're running it as a console application. If, if it's Merchant to Master while you're watching this, you just go and on, go on the safe stack documentation. There's a command, it's gonna be .NET new dash I and then uh, safe template or something like that. Some identifier, uh, some package identifier. They'll install the template into your .NET tool and then from, and when it's installed in your .NET tool, you go .NET new safe, and that generates a new folder. Uh, well, I should say in your folder, it generates a solution with all your projects and everything built in there. So from there, with this new version of safe, the only thing you need to do to run your code is do .NET run. And so since there's a new project that's called build.fsproj at the root of the solution, this is actually the, the, the new strategy for running fake scripts where they're not actually scripts anymore, they're compiled in a console application and then you just hit .NET run to start it up. And so it's a bit of a change and you know, I'm not gonna go deep into the reasoning with this, but there's a basically uh, removing a lot of black magic basically from the prior versions of fake that would install its own version of packet and you know, it's it was much more difficult to coordinate with the, the version change. And so this was suge a suggestion. And uh, basically, yeah, I'm, I'm trying it out and uh, I don't really have an opinion on it yet, but uh, it's very easy to get started. Just do .NET run and then whatever target you want to use or, or execute, you pass that target as an argument. Okay, so 
we have this built, we have this uh, .NET run to build our stuff. What else does it come with? Well, it has a template and it has a page. So it comes with like a to-do app. So this to-do app has a front end written with Bulma, Fable, and Elmish. And it connects to your back end with Fable Remoting. So Fable Remoting is a library to do uh, RPC style API calls to your back end. So what that means is instead of doing HTTP requests directly and getting a result, you have this little library where you can define uh, API calls and basically it does all the HTTP stuff uh, behind the scenes. So you basically are basically calling a method and returning a result and it's a remote procedure call. So it's actually happening on the server, but it's that that is abstracted from you. And how the safe stack works in development mode, because you have a development mode to make it go faster. So we use NPM to actually create a Webpack dev server. So it's using Webpack, which is a JavaScript kind of a tool, a build utility kind of thing. It actually launches a node process and basically your, your page is actually be delivered uh, via this NPM process and it allows for hot reloading. So when basically the, the whole, so the whole step, right? Go to the beginning, when you hit .NET run and you run the client, it sees, okay, it has to do .NET fable with a particular folder and it's gonna do a uh, serve webpack. And what that means is .NET fable is actually going to compile your code. So it's gonna be taking your FS files and converting them, converting them into fs.js files, so it converts them to JavaScript. And since it's .NET Fable watch, it will watch for your files when they get modified. So when they get modified, it tells Webpack to reload uh, the, the front end, basically. It, I don't exactly know the black magic behind the hot module replacement, but basically when your files change, it, it tells your front end, hey, reload please. And so that, that enables hot reloading so you have this process that, that serves your front end, and then you also have a .NET process for your back end. So your .NET process, which is also launched by fake, right? So in the build script, you can see there's like a .NET run and then uh, your server path. And so this launches a .NET process that basically launches the Saturn web server. And then all your API calls get routed from your front end to your back end. And it's kind of a, like very seamless. You don't have to do anything uh, to start. It's just there by default, all the configurations there and it's incredibly simple. So uh, you don't have to like know all the details and intricacies of the JavaScript world for it to work. It's nice to know eventually, like for bundling, bundle size and all that stuff. But you know, to start, you don't need that. So this is pretty cool because by default, you're already ready to you know, start modifying the code, start uh, adding stuff to the front end. You can modify the back end with fully, uh, fully enabled hot module replacement. And so it's a very incredible development environment. Everything gets updated as you go. And you can also have a, uh, instead of running the actual application, you can actually run tests with the same watching mechanism. So if you do .NET run, and then you pass run tests as the build target, that will actually uh, enable uh, watching, it will watch the tests. So basically when you change your files, it will rerun the tests every time you change the files. And you also run your tests on your front end, right? Because since your code is actually getting compiled by two different compilers, it's getting compiled by uh, the normal f -sharp compiler to generate assemblies in .NET, but your, your code is also getting compiled by Fable to generate JavaScript to get it served by Webpack. And on the front end, what we use to test is Fable Mocha. So in your back end, by default, you have Expecto, which is a unit test runner for F Sharp uh, on .NET. And then on your front end, you have Fable Mocha that will run your tests uh, with the generated JavaScript, right? And it's pretty seamless. So you, like normally you'd go to port 8080 to get your application. And then when you hit .NET run tests, you go to 8081 then it opens up a, a window and can actually do like test driven development. So you can write tests, save, and it'll automatically run your tests in the, in the browser. So uh, that's actually really cool. Uh, an overlooked feature, uh, overlooked for me uh, in, uh, initially. Now next for deployment. So if you were to use uh, Azure, 
then you have a build target that works out of the box with Farmer. So if you hit a .NET run Azure, uh, depending on how the script is initially written, you can actually log into Azure and uh, deploy a web app with an app service plan and directly, so uh, like within a few minutes, you can have your web application hosted on Azure, accessible uh, with the like uh, azurewebsites.net uh, suffix. And uh, you know, we can go more into depth in another video of that, but out of the box, you can get your web app hosted, which is pretty cool. Obviously it might not be like production, production quality, but if you just want to test like a little staging environment, uh, it's really amazing. It's, it's so e all of this is just so easy, it blows my mind. Like uh, the, the speed of development and all the, the, the integration of all these open source libraries is kind of unparalleled and you know, it can get taken for granted very easily. But you know, I just remember the days of writing like Apache Tomcat Java uh, web applications and how much, like, how much the environment sucked so, more that, uh, so much more than, than this environment. But now if you want to swap out a few pieces of the puzzle. So for example, if you want to swap out your backend with let's say Giraffe, so by default it comes with Saturn. If you want to swap it out with Giraffe, there's actually documentation on the SafeStack documentation to help you with that change, right? And I was actually going to use Giraffe initially, but after like doing the templating stuff, I was looking at the code, I was like, man, I'm just gonna use just like Saturn. Like I don't, you know, I don't remember why I want to use Giraffe and yeah, it's just easier for me to use Saturn. So I'm just gonna go with that. And in the case of this project, I actually swapped out. So when I checked out my branch, it came by default with Feliz. So there was a, an example, right? A, sap, a sample of a to-do app written in Feliz. And I wanted to swap it out with Sutil. So the process was actually mind-numbingly easy. The only thing I had to do was I removed the index.fs file, which is like uh, the application file or the, the, the front page file for that Feliz app. Uh, and instead, what I did is an, there's an app FS file, which is actually the, the, the program. So the start of the program for like an Elmish app, I, I overrid it with uh, the Sutil Elmish example that you can find on GitHub. I'll link it to, I'll link it, I'll, I'll link it in the description. Actually copy pasted that code, put it in the app FS. I added Sutil as a dependency in my project and my packet references in my dependencies. So I did uh, at the root, I did uh, .NET packet add dash I Sutil and that adds Sutil as a dependency um, for every project that I want. I just select the, um, the client project. And if you don't change the name of the project and you don't change the name of the file, that will actually work built in. That will work. You don't have to do anything else. Uh, it's a great experience to get to transition to it. And uh, yeah, I'm like really happy. And the reason why it works built in is because the Webpack file is the one that it, it looks for the, basically the root file. Uh, and so for example, in our case, the app.fs file is the, the root, it's the last file in the project, in the client project. So that's the one that needs to be linked in the Webpack file. And the name of the project is the same. So I kept the name client in, in both cases. So I didn't have to modify any Webpack files. I just started up, I hit it, and I had the counter app, you know, the, 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 the counter app for Sutil. And everything works uh, great. So that's such a, great, uh, such a great experience. And once I did that, I can actually go ahead and delete all the Felice and most of the Fable dependencies and my packet references and the dependencies. So now I just obliterated most of the dependencies. I, I still kept like Fable Core and Fable Mocha and stuff like that. And to treat myself, so the big thing with Sutil, well, next video we'll be talking about why, what is Sutil and why it's so cool and why it's, I think it will be very impactful in uh, F Sharp web development. But, you know, I could delete React and React DOM. Like we no longer need React to develop F sharp web applications. And that's a massive step ahead. Like Svelte is getting traction in the JavaScript world because there's no virtual DOM, there's no React, the bundle size are much smaller. It can enable great performance. Uh, and so that's performance that I'm going to need. That was, I think that was basically it for what I wanted to say in this video. So I just wanted to mention how, where you can get the template, how to get started, uh, how you build your code, 
how to change up uh, different frameworks and libraries. So yeah, like here you're basically ready to get started and get writing code. So uh, if you want to follow along with the series, I'm going to include in the description down below the link to the GitHub repository. Uh, that's where I, you know, I'm going to push everything. And uh, yeah, so next next episode, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about Sutil in depth, why it's so important. And I'm going to actually start writing some front end. So I'm gonna, we're going to write at least a page maybe. So we're going to do a page of what we want to do. Uh, maybe the front page, let's say, and get started with that. So hopefully you enjoyed the video. Make sure to leave a like if you enjoyed it. It really helps me out. You can comment down below if you have any questions or whatever comments. Any comment helps for the algorithm. And subscribe for more. Uh, I'm cranking out like two, maybe three videos a week right now. I also offer F Sharp freelancing and consulting. So if you're interested in that, you can check out my website down below to contact me. Other than that, thanks for watching and I'll see you in that next video. Peace.